Welcome. Uh, let us talk about uh, data mining, especially classification. And in classification, when we build a model, we need to look at two things. One is called overfitting, and the second thing is evaluation. Now, practical use of classification. Practical issues of classification, you can understand that when we create a model, we have an issue of overfitting and underfitting, missing values, and cost of classification. So these three aspects we actually consider as practical issues of classification. Look at these decision trees in practice. Growing in purity is bad overfitting because you see there are what happens. We basically have a uh, you know two-dimensional plot of sepal weight and sepal length. As you understand that there is a overlap of sepal width and sepal length, which is a kind of complexity we need to handle when the tree is very big. So we need to actually, once we have this kind of situation, how can we separate the region where we have, you know, over over overfitting and underfitting aspects. So decision tree in practice, what we say is that growing to purity is bad. Purity is bad, why? Because it is overfit. It terminates growth early and grow to purity, then prune back. Prune back, why? Because you need to remove the unnecessary branches in the tree. For example, take a look at this picture, what happens here. Here, what we are trying to find out the region which is non, no, none of our interest, and we have different classes. So you can see the region very clearly marked out and we need to remove split and merge leaves you know these are actually three aspects of uh, you can understand this is a representation from the tree so training and test set what happens is for classification problem we try to measure the performance of the model in terms of error rate percentage of incorrectly classified because sometimes error rate is a very important measure we find out whether a particular model is good or bad and we build a model because we want to use it to classify new data, unknown investors, right? So it's very important that we understand that what percentage of unknown instance can be correctly classified. So there is a redistribution error, which is an error rate on the training set. It is a bad predictor of performance on new data. So you can understand that what we need is to ensure that our model is not overfit. Underlying underfitting and overfitting, you can see very clearly, is that one is the downtrend. As we move ac across the samples, the performance decreases. And as we move across the sample, the performance is kind of a balanced trait. So there are two aspects. One is called overfitting, another is underfitting. Underfitting, when model is too simple, both training and test errors are large because the model really cannot cover all different you know cases and what happens in overfitting when model is too complex training error is also getting a small but test error is large you can understand because model is overfit when you use training data set you get a very good accuracy error is very less but when you take test data it's very very high so overfitting and Overfitting is is to be avoided. So learning a tree that classifies the training data perfectly may not lead the tree with the best generation to unknown set, unseen data. Why? Because the training data may be too biased and the model is too biased and it produces really good result, but on the test data it fails. So overfitting due to noise also sometimes is a very critical aspect. Overfitting due to insufficient examples because we do not cover entire case, so it is overfit. And there are many, many overfitting examples here. So overfitting to be avoided. And uh, this is a kind of, you can understand Ohm's law, V is equal to IR, it's a linear relationship, but still we see overfitting. So notes on overfitting, finally we say that overfitting results in decision tree that are more complex than necessary. And your training errors, you can understand it's no longer provides a good estimate of how well the tree will perform. That means training error not really a pure measurement on unseen data classification, how good will it be? And you may need new ways for estimating error. So how to avoid overfitting? 
stop growing the tree before it reaches the point where it's perfect it is when it perfectly actually classifies the training data perfect classification we need to be avoided and allow the tree to overfeed the data and then postpone the tree postpone why because once the tree is made then you can actually cut down the unnecessary branches you know so this is very important there is one law called Occam's razor given two models of similar error one should prefer simpler model over the more complex model for complex model there is a greater chance that it was fitted accidentally by errors in data and therefore one should include model complexity when evaluating a model that is the actually law of Occam's razors so how to address overfitting pre pruning early stopping rule stop the algorithm where it becomes fully grown tree typically stopping conditions for a node is stop if all in a stance belong to the same class or stuff if all attributes values are the same yeah so you try to actually address overfitting by early stopping rule what we call pre pruning now post pruning is once the tree has grown is entirely and trim the nodes and then if generation occurs like you know it you can further improve by trimming and replace subtree by leaf node so your target is to remove actually unnecessary branches after the tree is designed so there is one thing called minimum description language mdl this minimum description language is is a model creation language for example you have a cost model data cost model data there are actually two aspects of cost you can understand you are talking about finding the cost so you are looking for cost of data based on model and the cost of the model so cost is the number of bits required and this happens so criterion to determine the correct tree size there are actually criteria three criteria one is the training and validation set approach use a separate set of examples for that and you can find out and use all available data for training that's one of the second criteria and the third is use an explicit measure of complexity why because sometimes complexity measure helps you determine the tree size so there is a validation set provide a safety check against all overfitting spurious characteristics of data need to be large enough typically validation set is half the size of the training set generally and reducing error pruning so reduce error pruning properties are when pruning begins trees at maximum size and lowest accuracy over test set as pruning proceeds number of node is reduced and accuracy over test set increases so did that disadvantage there is a disadvantage of course when data is limited number of samples available for training is further reduced so when you are cutting down you are actually cutting down also cases that is very very important to remember so these are actually some of the issues i'm just keeping this one um, skipping this one model evaluation comes into very very important discussion now these are there are some metrics for performance when we are building a classification model naturally we would like to explore how to made it, how to evaluate our model so there are actually two things one is the metrics for performance evaluation by metrics we try to evaluate the performance of a model and another thing is methods for performance evaluation so how to obtain the reliable estimates one aspect is generally we call confusion metrics confusion metrics for performance evaluation is like this it focus on predicted capability of a model confusion matrix you have is actually 2 by 2 4 you can see one end you have a predicted class and the, and the other end is actual class we say true positive false positive true negative false negative so class yes class no you have a predicted class actual class class yes class no and then a b c d so what happens a is generally called true positive why because predicted class yes and actual class is also yes so true positive when you see b predicted is no actual is yes that means false negative you can see actual is yes but predicted class is no b that means tp tp is true positive and false negative actually it is positive but it is showing negative false negative and then you have false positive false positive why because predicted says yes but actual is no so it's false positive and finally true negative predicted no and actually also no 
So these four parameters are very, very important. One is true positive, true negative, false positive, false negative. So what we say true positive means which is predicted positive and actually positive. False negative means actually positive but predicted negative. And then false positive means actually negative but predicted positive. And then true negative means actually negative and predicted negative. So what happens, this is a matrix of the performance evolution. I have the value TP, TPTN, FP, FM. And we are calculating some matrix which you have to really think and practice. You find the accuracy. Accuracy is A plus D, you can understand true positive, plus whatever positive is sub become negative, true negative. A plus D, true positive plus true negative over all the sum of these four and then you become actually calculate the accuracy most widely used matrix accuracy second but there is a limitation of accuracy consider a two class problem number of class zero examples this and number of class one is this if the model predicts everything to be class zero accuracy is 19 so accuracy is misleading because model does not detect any class of one example right because there are very less number of one class only 10 so measuring predictability can count the number of correct predictions and uh, in Weka it has a different form and dif different application has a different form. So cost matters of course, the error rate is an inadequate measure and the cost of making progress. So we try to find out four different calculation here. This is very important for our upcoming uh, you know, mid exam because while we talk about the classification and especially data preprocessing here, you have the given the value of TP, TN, APFN, and you calculate four things here, recall, then precision. You can see recall is true positive over true positive plus false negative. Precision is true positive over true positive plus false positive and true positive rate, true positive over true positive plus false negative. And true and false positive rate is false positive over false positive plus true positive. So this four calculation you have to keep it in the mind. So this is a cost matrix. And the cost matrix generally we use C of IJ, we say that cost of misclassifying class. That means why it is a cost matrix? because it, this confusion matrix determines how accurate is my model is. So if the model is, uh, is expensive, why? Because it's actually classifying wrong. So that's why it is called cost matrix, okay? So computing cost of classification, you can see now. These are the different numbers. And we have different accuracy and cost, you see? So you can understand that cost calculation is based on true positive, false positive, and true negative, false negative. So cost sensitive measures, we have a precision. Precision A over A plus C, you can see. Recall A over A plus B, and F measure, some F measure is widely used. So please remember, F measure is talking about the measurement of, you know, rate, true positive rate. You can see 2A over 2A plus B plus C. This is very important cost sensitive measures. But the problems we have, if we cannot estimate accurately or precisely the cost, benefits of target conditions is very dif difficult to determine. So one thing is very important, what we call is receiver operating characteristics or ROC curve. ROC curve helps us to understand that how accurate is my model. So model evaluation, uh, uh, model uh, methods for model comparison is this. We have a classifier, right? And classifier, actually against an object, is a predefined set of classes. We have two class problem, we have n class problem also. And sometimes we have true positive, true, uh, true negative, false, true positive, and false positive, false negative. This kind of situation we try to explain. And we have false positive and false negative model prediction and all that. So there is a two class confusion matrix we know. Positive negative is a predicted class and positive negative true class. So the concept is same. But what you see, you are actually 
reduce the four numbers to two rates, true positive rate and false positive rate and rates are independent of class ratio. So example three classifiers you can see and these three classifier you calculate classifier one, two, three and you find out and based on the comparison you come to a decision. So there is an assumption also a standard cost model. Now how to evaluate performance? Scalar matters accuracy, expected cost and area under ROC curve and you have a visualization technique called cost curve and uh, ROC curve. So we are using a scalars, I am skipping some of them. Uh, receiver operating characteristics, ROC curve, receiver operators, operator characteristics. It's basically understanding of the, of the classification model, summarize and present performance of any binary class. Summarize and present performance. So ROC curve actually is the performance, you know, uh, performance uh, representation in, in, a, in a very close, in a very compact form. So models ability to distinguish between false and true positive. And you can see receiver operating characteristics, curve analysis, you can have different techniques. I skip this part. Uh, we try to s stay into some of the models. At a plot, I skip this, this. Skip this also. So finally, um, we actually talk about methods for performance evaluation, how to obtain a reliable estimate of performance. Performance of a model may depend on the factors, class distribution, cost of misclassification, and the size of training and test set. So this is a kind of thing I estimate here. I skip cross validation or let's skip this. So that's all for, for the discussion and uh, I hope you really enjoyed. But try to look at uh, some of the practices of uh, you know, performance calculation of classifiers.